Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the secret behind player development and kind of how to break it all down. Before we get into the video, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, turn on that noti bell to never miss a video. Like the video if you haven't already. Can we get 350 likes on this video? You guys have been killing it. If you could like the video right now, that'd be awesome. Every like goes a long way in helping the channel out, and it's free. And of course, comment down below if you have anything to add to this video. And if you haven't already, check out Underdog. My link will be down below in the description. If you use code Poodle when signing up, you will get up to $1,000 on your first deposit, as well as a 0.5 free pick. And don't forget, they are running specials every single day. It is the greatest place to play fantasy sports. Make sure you do check it out. Love Underdog. And if you need any help with signing up or playing on there, make sure to hit me up on Twitter or down below and I will make sure to assist you. So let's get into this. The secret behind player development and kind of the routes that come from this. And I will explain all this in a second. So I keep seeing this. So I had made videos the first month going over. I learned some more. I made some more videos. Understand that when I do make these videos and people have commented this like, oh, didn't you talk about this? Remember, as we play this game, we're learning. Every time I play this game, as I do more leagues, I'm learning more stuff. So I do want to kind of refine some explanations as we do go through and kind of explain what certain things mean with new information. So I keep seeing comments about my player won't grow in this situation. Why won't my player's ability is upgrade? I don't understand. I had this nor I had this this freshman with elite dev who didn't grow, but my normal dev player grew. I'm still seeing comments. So clearly people are still learning and still don't entirely grasp it. So I do want to break this down. So let's go over to roster and take a look at some players and compare some some concepts here. So I'm going to explain why some players suck and some players don't. We're looking at LSU and there's a few years in. So this is even better because I can go ahead and kind of break down certain players for you and explain some things. So let's start with Caden Durham. He was a star dev freshman at 74 overall. He grew an insane amount very quickly. Now let's go through why. So I have made individual videos going over a lot of this stuff, but I do want to start to break down a few other things. Now, take a look at his abilities. I want you to look at two things. His abilities aren't crazy. Silvers, one platinum, but a super high overall. This is where players, this is where people comment. I don't get it. He's a star elite dev, but his abilities won't upgrade. Hate this game. Why doesn't it work? Other people say all their abilities upgraded, but they're low overalls. I don't get it. Just look at this explanation. Hayden Durham's a 98 overall, still with room to grow. His abilities don't match, which kind of sucks. Because honestly, there's moments where I say, wow, if he had platinum sidestep, or platinum takeoff, or platinum 360, this guy would be insane. But at least he's a 98 overall. Take a look at his dev trait and understand that dev trait has nothing to do with your overall ceiling. Nothing. Nothing to do with the highest overall you can get to. All dev trait means is how quickly you can get to those things. Quickly, you can potentially get to those things in the right situations. So take a look at ratings. The reason Durham is a 98 overall is because look at his stat caps. Unlimited, full, unlimited, summon IQ, but that doesn't exactly matter for running back. Route running is even high. He has an 88 short route running as a running back. Power is high. He can be a power back at five foot like six. Quickness is, is maxed out, right? He can still get one more bar. He still has room. So the reason his overall has went up so quickly is because AI played well with him. That's the, that's the key with development trait. Development trait isn't about isn't about how high you can grow. It's not about how good your abilities can get. It's about how much XP you can accrue. So if you play really well with them, you can accrue XP, which the player will then use to upgrade their ratings or to upgrade their abilities. So this is the key thing here. Something that I've learned with the player development. When playing well with a player, they're going to choose what they upgrade. I've, I've ten, I tend to see that they lean more towards upgrading their ratings more than their abilities. And now you're going to say, can you upgrade your abilities? Yes. It's kind of like Road to Glory. I made a whole video going over this. They use skill points to upgrade their abilities. So it's, and these abilities, if you look at Road to Glory, can be anywhere from three to six to nine to like 15 for platinum, right? So at this point, sidestep would require about nine for gold. When to upgrade their ratings, it's only four. It's only five. It's only eight. It's only 13. So look at this quickness is something he's never upgraded. It seems to be like they upgrade the cheapest thing to be, I guess, well-rounded because quickness is one that he has not upgraded one time. I'm pretty sure he's been at 94 speed the entire time. Everything else like route running, which was his cheapest, keeps going up. That was just an 81 or an 82. Now it's an 88. That keeps going up. Power's not touched. It kind of looks like, it looks like they look at their archetype plus their cheapest. But so keep that in mind. That's why a player can get up to 99 overall with bad abilities because it doesn't seem like he has much incentive to upgrade his abilities. So I want you to just remember that a player that with maxed out ceiling, right? Like a, a, an uncapped ceiling, like limitless potential probably goes up in overall 
And this also applies to end of the season boost. When you get that off season training upgrade, you get stat upgrades. So keep that in mind too. I do want you to also remember that those off season upgrades that you get when you advance to the off season has nothing to do with their development trait. That is a random boost that you get based on coaching packages and a few other variables. It has nothing to do with your dev trait. So yes, in fact, a normal, a normal development player can actually grow higher or in, they can get a four plus overall boost while an elite guy gets one or nothing or two, right? That is unrelated. So now let's flip this. Come look at my quarterback, Hashim. This is my five-star recruit quarterback, five-star recruit, came with almost no abilities, all bronze at best, right? He was a five-star recruit, star development trait, only 85 overall. He almost won the Heisman. He won quarterback of the year. He won what at freshman of the year. He won all these awards and he didn't, he's only 85. So how did Durham go to a 98 overall with bad abilities? But Ashim, who had crazy seasons, only go up to an 85 overall in his going into his now second year, right? He's about to complete it. How is he only an 85 overall, but he has gold magician, he upgraded option, he upgraded extender, he upgraded off platform. He's been he's been mainly upgrading his abilities. Magician was only, I think, I think it was bronze, or I don't even think he had it yet. It was like grayed out still, right? Take a look at his ratings. He's a super capped player. And this is where it's unfortunate, because this is where the question comes of: wait, I have a five-star with star dev. Why, why is he not going up in overall? Why did a normal dev guy, oh, I actually have this. I have a normal dev player who went up seven overalls in the offseason upgrade based on packages, based on coaching packages for offseason upgrades. Hashim didn't move much. He went from an 82 over, he was an 82 overall freshman. He went from an 82 overall freshman to an 85. Why? Basically, this player's at his ceiling. He's at his ceiling stat wise. His elusiveness can't go up much. His accuracy can barely go up much. His IQ is already maxed. His health's already almost maxed. His quickness is maxed. His power can slightly go up. So with that being said, power is 11, accuracy is nine, health is 11. These are super expensive to upgrade. So guess what? Every XP bonus he gets, every, every skill point he gets, it's going to his abilities. In the offseason, when we advance, Hashim barely went up because offseason is not tied to your, your development rate. It's tied to kind of your, your skill caps and everything else in your packages. He barely went up in overall, but when he used his skill points he had, Magician went up to gold, option came went up to silver, extender went up to silver, all platinum went up to silver. So if you want to know where your players stand, or let's say you want abilities on players, if you want abilities and you care about abilities, capped players kind of are great because capped players are going to get more abilities. This also means a guy like Durham, depending on how you know, things are still a little, a little random, but a guy like Durham probably hits his ceiling of 98, 99 first, and then gets his, his like stupid abilities, which is unfortunate because honestly, he's already a junior. There's a good possibility that he may go right to the draft and I'll never get to see him with those platinum abilities. So that kind of sucks. On the flip side, Hashim isn't going to get a good deep ball. His deep ball sucks. He can't throw deep. It's a 78 overall, but he has all the abilities I want. And honestly, at this next up, at this next window of advancing and we get some more XP in the season ends, he probably goes up to gold and a few more abilities because all these are very expensive and the odds are he'll use them to upgrade his abilities, which is going to be slightly cheaper. It's probably like nine or it's probably about the same. So this is going to be interesting to kind of see if they're tied, right? Nine points for abilities or nine points for skill point upgrades here, like 11 or nine. What does he go with? Does he upgrade his accuracy or does he go with abilities? Like what takes precedent here when things are all equal? But keep that in mind that you want to, these are all unrelated things. S development trait, abilities being upgraded, skill points, five star versus one star. All these things mean nothing for their growth as individual things. They all play a separate role, right? They don't, they don't mean like elite development doesn't mean they're going to be elite players. And I keep seeing people say this. I keep seeing people say, oh, you know, I don't need a five-star player. I, if I go for the three stars, I'm finding elite three stars. They're just as good. No, because that doesn't mean they're going to grow. You still have to play with them and keep this in mind. An elite three-star player is a 64 to 67 overall, probably maybe a 68, maybe a 68. And a normal dev five-star could be an 80, could be a 79, 82. So, and also those three-star players could be stat capped. Also keep that in mind. So they, it could be nothing, but even if they all have unlimited stat caps, let's say you get a 10 plus boost with your, with your three-star or, or six, let's say six to an eight, like a really good off-season boost with your three-star, a 64 plus eight is only 72. So your sophomore year, 72, you get another eight plus boost, junior year, 80, senior year, you go up to 85. That means that in a, in a, in a, in a great college career where you get over 20 upgrade boosts, like 21 as a three-star elite you're ending as a, as a mid 80, low 80. That's where five stars basically start. That's like their floor. So understand that with the, with the secret to player development, right? 
you have to focus on all those factors, but also understand your starting point matters. It's just like a race, right? If you guys are both equal speed, you're going to tie. If you're equal speed, but the other guy gets a 10 yard lead, he's going to kill you. If you're equal speed, but the other guy gets a 50 yard lead, he's going to absolutely kill you. It's just like that in CFB 25. People are so concerned about stealing three star gems, stealing four star gems. While they're great, five stars are still king because of the floor they get to. If you get a five star that starts at 81 overall, and I'll give you an example of a guy like this, they are instant impact players. And why is this important? If this was Madden, if this was Madden where players, you can sign them to eight year contracts, seven year contracts, and you could have them for 10, 15 year careers, does three stars would be elite because you could just build them. You get the extra years. In CFB, you have three years before they can declare. Yes, you can redshirt. Yes, you can do all this stuff, but they get to declare in their junior year, which means if you get a 65 overall, you may not build him to where you want him until his junior year, which means he's gone. Hashim, on the other hand, my quarterback, was basically a starter day one. 82 overall, 82 overall with some bronze and some great out abilities, was useful as a freshman. As a sophomore, he has gold and silver abilities as an 85 overall. He's officially a starter in college football, a good starter in college football. That's not something that you're going to get with a three star, which means I get a sheen for his freshman year. I could use him for his sophomore year, his junior year, and maybe because he's capped even his senior year, because he may not be high enough overall to go to the draft right away. So that's them to keep in mind. These three star guys, you may not be able to fully trust and start them as a, especially a certain position. You're not starting a 60 overall guard. You're not starting a 60 overall wide receiver. Maybe you're running back, but you're not starting a 60 overall quarterback. So that's where you have to really understand how player development works and, and how you're going to play this is that although those three stars look kind of flashy and they could be fun and they could be like this way to steal some players, they're not starting to potentially late year two of their freshman year, maybe year three, maybe year four. Holiday, another example. This was a guy I got as a five-star freshman recruit, he got star dev. He's basically uncapped for the most part. He'll probably get to like mid, mid 90s. He was an 82 overall freshman. After one good year, went up to a 91. So in his sophomore year, he's one of the best pass rushers in CFB with good abilities. And again, this is a good example of quick jumps only platinum because he came with it. And this is another thing, again, it's not about player development, but this is why recruiting players with abilities is so important. Because if you get an uncapped player like Durham, they're not gonna get many abilities because they're gonna keep upgrading their overall. Trent Holiday has not, he, all of his abilities, I don't know if you, you can't see it behind my webcam, they're all grayed out. He has not a single ability besides quick jump platinum, which he came with. He came with that ability. So this is a situation where he's upgrading very quickly to 91 overall, but he's not touching his abilities. So I'm basically stuck with an ability, a, a non-ability player throughout his collegiate career because he came without them. So if you could, if you could recruit a guy who has platinum quick jump, gold duress, and maybe bronze takedown, but then get their abilities, again, they get their ratings upgraded. That's why I made a video going over how important it is to make sure you, you start recruiting players with abilities because you can get the, the most God tier players you're going to get are the ones that come with abilities and three-star players are not going to have great abilities Five those it's those five-star players that come with those gold and those platinums and, and a good amount of them too, right? So that's why it's so important to focus on the five stars when developing players and just understanding how development, the development tree is going to branch out as you go on. That, that is so important. This guy is an elite starter in year two, something a three-star won't be. So just keep that in mind when doing player development. Elite doesn't really mean anything from this perspective. Elite just means there's a better chance for you, the user, to impact his development. That's how I see it. Elite and star mean that if you play really well, you put them in positions to succeed, you can get a lot of XP with them. But a lot of XP doesn't dictate that they'll be a high overall or it doesn't dictate they'll have a lot of abilities. It's gonna pick what it wants to do with that XP, right? And also if they're 60 overall, it's gonna be really hard to put most positions like a cornerback, a edge rusher, a DT, a quarterback, a wide receiver, a tight end, it's gonna be really hard to accrue XP with them. So you're gonna have to let them redshirt and sit. And because they're such a low overall, you're gonna to have to pray and hope that variability upgrades them for you. So just keep that in mind. If I could wrap this up in one thing, development trait is based on how much the user can play with them and get XP with them. It's based on how well you can put them in position to succeed. Stat caps is really the king. No stat caps mean abilities are gonna be hard to come by, but it means their overalls gonna get super high. Bad stat caps, which means you have a bunch of them, means abilities can get super high, but their overall might not be as high. And also there's some things you can keep in mind, like with Ashim, his 78 overall deep ball sucks and he can't throw deep because of it. And his accuracy is almost capped and it's really expensive to upgrade. So he may always be a bad deep ball guy. Keep that in mind when building these players. And yeah, that basically sums up like the secret behind player development. It's a little complex and I feel like people are 
people are just tying things together. Elite elite trait does not is not the end all be all. Normal dev players can outgrow because the end of the season progression has nothing to do with your dev trait. It has nothing to do with whether or not you're an elite prospect. It has everything to do with coaching packages and whatever CFB algorithm decides to do to you. So keep that in mind and understand that elite growth for a 60 overall player is 20 points over four years. And that means a mid to low 80 overall player, a five-star recruit who starts at 81 overall could get 15 points in their whole career. They could get eight points in that first year and instantly be an elite starter. That really is the key. It's kind of like playing Road to Glory. There's the blue chip. There's the elite prospect. There's the underdog. There's the non-recruited player. Will the walk-on players? It's the same concept. Like those players need three to four years to become a starter. These players, these five-star players could be a starter year one in some programs. And by year two, they could be an elite, elite starter. That is the difference is you're looking at a player that I could play for the next two seasons. I could play for potentially three seasons versus a player I could maybe play for one as a starter, but not an elite player. Keep that in mind, guys. But that is basically it for the video. If you have any questions regarding player development, I will eventually go into all these things even deeper as I do learn more, as I do break down some more details. Like I said, it's a constantly growing, it's a constantly growing game in the sense that we're learning still. This is the first time we played it. There's more testing being done. There's updates being done. As updates are done, they may unlock things. They may, they may make things harder to do, easier to do. So keep that in mind, guys. But if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn that noti bell so you don't miss any videos just like this. Like, can we get 300 likes in the video? I'd greatly appreciate it. Comment down below if you have any questions. If you haven't already checked out Underdog, using code Poodle gets you up to $1,000 in your first deposit, a 0.5 free pick, and there's so many great promos right now you don't want to miss out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.